I've been programming professionally for over a decade, and I've worked with languages as low level as C and assembly and as high level as Ruby on Rails, React and JavaScript and everything in between. And throughout that decade, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've built a lot of projects. And I've come to realize certain things about programming that took me a really long time to realize. And in this video, I want to talk about some of those things that I only learned after working in programming for over a decade. These are things that when I was younger, I thought were completely opposite of what I think is the truth now. So these are things that can hopefully help you on your programming journey, helping you focus on certain things to make programming more fun, make it easier for you not to burn out and make it so it's easier for you to actually learn the things that you want to learn. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And one of the biggest tips people like to give you when you're programming is don't refactor too much, especially don't completely rewrite the program you're working on. And this is overall really good advice when you're working on large enterprise scale applications. But when you're learning how to program and you're working on smaller scale applications, Sometimes the best thing you can do, especially for your learning, is to completely scrap something you're working on and write it completely from scratch. This is something that's most important and most useful when you're first learning how to do something in particular. So if you're first learning React, maybe you're first learning JavaScript, or maybe you're not necessarily learning a new language, but you're learning how to write a new style of program. Maybe it's the first time you ever wrote an e-commerce site, or maybe you're dabbling in game development, but you already know the language it's in, but this is the first time you've ever done game development, so there's a lot of different things you need to learn related to it. This is a really great opportunity to start building something and working towards it, and probably about halfway through building that thing, you're gonna realize, holy crap, I made a huge mistake in how I architected all these different things. It just doesn't work with this way of doing things, whether it's it doesn't work with the way of React or some other reason, you essentially took your preconceived notions and put them on this new thing you're learning and you realize, hey, this doesn't actually work with this new thing. This is the perfect opportunity to essentially completely scrap everything you've done and rebuild it from scratch. This may seem really discouraging, but generally a lot of the hard stuff is the logic that you built. And that doesn't matter really what language or framework or technique you're using, the logic will stay the same. So really all you need to do is re-implement that logic and UI in a new way of doing things, whether it's a new way of structuring things or a new way of laying out your data, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter, but it's not something that's going to take a huge amount of time. It's going to take you significantly less time than it took you to build it out originally. And this is really great because the first attempt of you building this thing, you realized, hey, this way I thought of doing it was completely wrong and it didn't work. Now I'm going to rebuild that thing in this new way and you can compare and contrast. Hey, did that new way I thought was going to work actually make it better? If so, that's great. If not, well, you can revert back to the old way or you can try scrapping it again to create a third way of doing things to see what works the best. Now this of course only works on smaller scale projects or newer projects when you're first learning something. Obviously, if you're working at Google, working on a million line code base, you don't want to completely scrap the entire thing. That's pretty much impossible to do. But when you're working and learning on your own, scrapping your idea is really, really important. Also going back to older code that you wrote and rewriting it brand new using your new knowledge and your new abilities can really help you not only motivate yourself for how far you've come, but also be able to help you teach yourself better ways to do things based on how you used to do things. Now, the next topic that I want to talk about is going to be focused on larger scale projects and projects that you want to maintain for a considerable period of time. So that first tip was all about smaller projects. This one's about larger projects and it is all about planning. A lot of times people in the past would do waterfall planning, which is where you plan out like an entire application. You spend weeks and months planning out every single facet of the application. Then you sit down, you build the entire thing, and then you deploy the application. And we've kind of gone away from that more to a agile, more sprint methodology, where instead you have like one or two week periods where you set some goals for things you want to build, you build them, and then you deploy them. So you're deploying smaller pieces at a time instead of trying to hopefully plan and do things properly. But some people have taken it too far where they don't do any planning at all. And I think there's definitely a sweet spot in between the two. When you're first working on a new project or a new feature or some new implementation, it's a really good idea to sit down and spend considerable time planning out what that's going to look like. My favorite way to do this planning is to plan out what the actual data is going to look like, whether that's my database or maybe it's going to be my state management, whatever it's going to be, I wanna know what is the data in my application and what is the UI for my application gonna look like. If I can figure out those two things, it's gonna be generally really easy for me to implement all the other glue that holds everything together, especially if you're doing web development because web development is really just a UI that displays data to the user and has interactions for modifying that data. 
So if you understand what your data is going to do and you understand what your user can do and how that informs your UI, it can be really easy just to glue everything together. I almost always have a large whiteboard sitting next to me and I will write out an entire database diagram, just a freehand really rough sketch of what my database is going to look like in my application before I write any of the code for my application. This gives me a really easy starting point for my application because I can just get started writing out what my data is going to look like. And sure, this is going to change at some point. I'm going to be writing code and realize, hey, this way I planned it doesn't work. But it gives me a starting point for me to work towards. And if I ever get stuck with anything, I can just go back to that database drawing that I have and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to work on this next section of the application because hopefully that'll unstuck me from where I'm at right now. I can work on something and then come back to that thing that I was stuck on. So it not only gives you things that you can accomplish, but it also gives you kind of a roadmap of what your application is going to look like. Almost every time that I skip this planning step, I get about halfway through a project and completely scrap it and realize that I completely messed up what I was supposed to do, or I just get unmotivated or whatever it is, and I end up not finishing the project. But when I go through the extra steps of writing out this actual database diagram or whatever planning I want to do, I have a much higher chance of success for building that project. Now, the last two tips, I talked a lot about project building. So for this next tip, I want to talk about learning and how you really don't need to stay up to date with the latest stuff that's happening in web development or programming. In web development and programming, things move incredibly fast, and there are new concepts and languages and frameworks coming out every single day, it seems like. And it may overwhelm you thinking of all these different things that you've never even heard of, have never worked on, and they're just coming out all over the place, and everyone's talking about them all over the place, and you feel like you're the only one that's never used it and doesn't know anything about it. But that's just not true. It is my full-time job to keep up to date with these different technologies and teach them to you, and even I fail to keep up with all the stuff that's coming out. So as someone that's not doing this for your full-time job, it is perfectly okay not to stay up to date with everything. I would recommend choosing a few small subsets of things that you really care about. If you're a CSS developer, focus on the new CSS stuff. If you're a React developer, focus on the new React stuff that's coming out. But even then, you don't need to stay up to date with everything that's coming out inside of your specialties. Just try to stay mostly up to date with those things. Even if you're just hearing about them and not actually learning about them, that's okay. Just generally hear about what's going on, but don't think that you need to learn all these things that are coming out. Sure, you can learn the ones that interest you and that are within your focuses, but don't worry about not knowing certain things. If you look for a job, for example, you'll see there's still tons of jobs asking for jQuery, PHP, and so on, other languages that have been around forever that have not been taught or anything for so long, but there's still jobs for these particular languages because large-scale companies have code that is older that they need people to work on. So most companies aren't hiring you for the latest and greatest CSS, React, Next.js features. They're hiring you for the stuff that's been around for five, 10 years because that's what their entire company was built on. Now, I'm obviously not saying to completely ignore all the new stuff that's coming out. The newest stuff that's coming out is honestly really exciting to learn about, at least for me, because it allows me to do more stuff with web development, which is really exciting. And it also will help you with certain jobs that you're working on. When you're working on projects, you can employ these new techniques into those projects to help make the code even better but don't feel like you're not gonna be able to get hired or that you're falling behind just because you don't learn every single new JavaScript framework that comes out. It's not important, especially if you're just focusing on one or two specific specialties. Now for this next topic, I'm gonna to focus a little bit on AI, but it's actually gonna be more all encompassing than AI. And that is to leverage the tools that you have to be able to build your programs faster and quicker. A lot of times developers may think that you want to do things only in a specific way. You're like, I'm handwriting every single line of code because that's what makes me a true developer, knowing every single function out there. And a lot of people thought that way. And then we had autocomplete and IntelliSense come out. And a lot of people pushed back against that, which seems crazy nowadays, but they pushed back against it because they're like, oh, well, you're not actually learning to code. You're just clicking tab autocompleting the entire way. And they were pushing back against that. But Nowadays, everyone realizes that having this autocomplete and IntelliSense, not even AI, just normal IntelliSense and autocomplete is incredibly helpful because it means you don't need to memorize every single function name. You can just generally remember what it is and it'll fill in the information for you. Same thing with like type safety and so on. These are really great things that we've been able to use and it's been able to make us more productive as programmers. AI is just kind of the next generation and step of that whether it's AI autocomplete or it's AI actually helping you write code or even writing code for you. This is something that I highly recommend that you leverage, but do so in a way that you still understand what's going on in the code. This whole idea of vibe coding where you just write AI prompts to code what you want it to do is something that does not work very well at all, unless you have an extremely technical background and know what code it's writing and can look at the code and tell it exactly what to do, and then maybe it'll work for you. But generally the way that I find AI works the best is as a companion to help me write my code. If I wanted to create some type of UI component for me, that's a great use case for the AI. 
but when I'm trying to write like hardcore business logic, the AI can help me with it, but usually it's gonna throw in certain bugs into there and it actually takes me more time to debug the code that the AI wrote than it does just to write it myself. And if I start to go the vibe coding approach of just like typing in what I want and hitting enter, not even looking at it, I may realize that there's bugs in my code, but I don't realize it until days or even weeks after the code was written, which makes it even harder to fix those particular bugs. So AI is a great tool to be able to leverage, to help you write code quicker, to take care of monotonous tasks or do specific easy things. But I wouldn't rely on it to write your entire code base for you, especially with where AI is at right now, because it makes so many mistakes. With that said though, I think it's really important to leverage these tools that we have, whether it's AI, IntelliSense, or some new tool that comes out after this video. Leveraging these tools and learning how they can work inside of your workflow will make you a more productive developer, which makes you more likely to get hired as a developer. Now, the next topic I want to talk about is one that can really help you with burnout and finding enjoyment in programming. And that is realizing that you don't need to have side projects or passion projects to be a good programmer. So many people think that you need to be coding at home on the side, building out cool projects to be able to be a successful and good programmer. But the reality is, is you can be a nine to five programmer. You go in, you program for your day job. And as soon as you're done, you're completely done programming. That is 100% perfectly okay. There's nothing at all wrong with that. So if that's how you enjoy programming, you are 100% okay to do that. But one thing that I've found is that having passion projects on the side can help make programming more fun. Because generally when you're working a job, the code you're writing there is not that exciting. You're creating another UI widget for another person inside your company to use to do some type of you know boring financial or accounting or whatever it is. It's usually generally pretty boring stuff. There's some exciting parts of it, but it's not something you generally care that much about compared to your own passion projects on the side. So I found sprinkling in some passion projects every once in a while to have on the side really helped make me enjoy the actual programming experience much more. Because instead of having programming being kind of a boring thing that I do, creating things that I don't really care that much about, it's something I can use to actually take my visions in my mind and put them out into the world and onto the screen. Now, I obviously don't always have a side project that I'm working on, but I do like to sprinkle them in here and there every once in a while when I start to get kind of bored or complacent, or maybe I'm getting a little bit burnt out on the actual stuff I'm working on for my professional job. Then I like to sprinkle in these side projects because they're something that are more exciting, more enjoyable, and can re-spark my passion for programming. The one thing to be careful about though is if you are starting to experience some burnout, sometimes throwing on additional work of the same thing can increase your burnout. So just be careful depending on the type of person you are and the type of burnout you're experiencing, you may need to either want to add passion projects or remove them entirely to try to combat that burnout. For me, I generally get more burnt out on the like monotony of it. So adding in a passion project makes it more exciting, which brings that excitement back to me. But if you're getting burnt out on the actual idea of coding, a passion project is not a great idea. And while we're talking about passion projects, one important thing to realize is these don't need to be something you plan to ever publish. That's great if you want to publish your passion project, but it just needs to be something that you enjoy and you want to work on. I have so many passion projects that I purely worked on just for myself, just to build entirely just because I wanted to do it. Not because I ever wanted to publish it, I've never published any of them, just because I wanted to do this particular thing, I said, hey, this sounds like an interesting challenge, I wonder how I would tackle solving that problem, and I go ahead and build a side project to do it, because I want to see if I can and see what it looks like to build that particular thing. Now, obviously I have side projects that I want to build to be able to publish and to show to people, but for the most part, most of my side projects are things I work on purely for myself, just because I wanted to see if I can do it and see what it looks like. Now, those are the only five tips I had planned out for this video, but I wanna give you one bonus tip, and that is that you don't need to be a content creator or a social media personality or even online in pretty much any way. A lot of people, especially in the web development space, really push to say, hey, you should create content. You should make a blog. You should make YouTube videos. You should have a Twitter profile or a presence on different social media platforms. And sure, those things can help you with landing a job or whatever it is that you want to do. But if you don't enjoy creating content, writing blogs, or doing social media, it's going to suck the fun out of programming. And it's not going to be something that will actually help you because it's painfully obvious when you see someone that doesn't enjoy these things and they're only doing it because they think it'll increase their potential for getting hired. If you want to do that and you enjoy it, more power to you, do that. But if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. It's just a waste of your time and it's not something that's actually gonna bring joy to you. So I'd recommend completely skipping those things if you don't enjoy them. Now, if you enjoyed this more off the cuff kind of talking style video, I have more videos just like this talking about different things that I've learned and different things you can learn from programming. I'm gonna link them right over there. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.